Christine Chang and today I'm going to show you how to photograph a wedding ceremony. First things first, I shoot with two camera bodies. I shoot with the Canon 5D Mark III and on one lens I have the 24 to 70 f2.8 and on the other one I have the 70 to 200 f2.8. These lenses are pretty expensive to have and I know a lot of people um, might not have this long lens if you're a newbie, but I highly recommend renting one, at least having two camera bodies to begin with, um, because if your first camera body fails, which that has happened to me twice before, um, you have a backup, and I can't imagine what you would tell a bride if you didn't have a backup. Um, and the 70 to 200 lens, it's also, I think it's the difference between okay wedding photos and really high impact, uh, intimate emotional photos and I'll tell you why in a bit. So now we're gonna go to a setup of a wedding ceremony. I'm gonna show you how uh, myself and my second shooter maneuver while we're shooting one. Now to start off, we have the primary and second photographer and it's important that you guys are working as a team. So a lot of times wherever I am, my second shooter is mirror, mirroring me. So we're never at the same place at the same time, otherwise it's pointless to have a second photographer. So during the ceremony, normally my second shooter is in the back getting wide shots. I'm up front getting tight shots. So here we have the bride and the groom. This is the officiant. Here's the bridal party. Here's your audience. So the bridal party is gonna come down the aisle. Where am I here? Where is my, okay. So I'm usually standing or crouching down here. So bridal party's coming down, boop, 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 like this. And then my second shooter is back here. And here comes the bride. I don't know why she has an angry face. So she's coming down. <laughs> I'm getting tight shots of her as she's coming down. And I'm also getting shots of the groom's reaction as she's coming down. My second shooter is getting wide shots as she's coming down the aisle here. So she comes to meet the groom. And here I'm backing off here. And here's something to keep in mind. You are always staying on the outskirts here. You, one place you don't wanna be is right here. I see some videographers and photographers and they'll post up here the entire time. This is the worst place to be. You're blocking everyone's view. No one wants to look at your butt the whole time. <laughs> so you're gonna stay on the outskirts here. So I'm getting tighter shots. I'm usually maneuvering around up here. Second shooter is back here. So during the ceremony, I might be here. I'll get pictures of parents' reactions. And I could switch sides. And also when you're switching sides, I recommend if the wedding's not too big, to swiftly go around the back so you're not distracting people. And uh, when I say swiftly, I mean like don't run in a panic because people pick up on that energy and they don't like it. So you're maneuvering around. And from here, you can take, uh, this is with the 70 to 200 lens now. And these are the intimate moments that you can get. So you're maneuvering around here and just say this is where they're saying their vows. Now, when they're saying their vows, you wanna take pictures of the person who's listening to the vows. So say the groom's talking, you're gonna take pictures of the bride and her reaction. When it's turned for the bride to talk, you're gonna come around and take pictures of the groom. Uh, there's no point in taking pictures of somebody speaking. It's just a much more meaningful moment when you're taking pictures of the person who's listening. So after um, vows, it's usually ring exchange. So for ring exchange, I actually like to be back here photographing it from this angle. And I have, of course, my second shooter here getting it from this angle. So they do the ring exchange and when they kiss, now here's a little tip. Usually before the ceremony, I have a powwow with the officiant. <laughs> and I say, hey, after you pronounce them husband and wife, can you take a step to the side so that I can get a picture of them kissing? A clear view without you in the way. And usually they remember to do that. So. I now pronounce you husband and wife. He steps out of the way, they kiss, and I get it from this point of view. And this, I think, is a much stronger point of view 
than this one because it tells a full story of the kiss and you have the audience in the back, which I think is a great shot. So they kiss. Oopsie. So I now pronounce you husband and wife. And as they're walking down during their recessional, again, swiftly, you <laughs> walk around and I'm usually side by side with my second shooter by now. So they come down the aisle and as they're exiting here, see the exit here, my second shooter stays here because she's gonna capture the rest of the uh, bridal party coming down the aisle and the parents. So she stays, they're exiting. And what I'm doing here is, uh, let me move these out of the way. I'm following the bride and groom because this is always a really good moment here. So it's usually a very sweet moment and then their friends are right behind them and there's a lot of hugs and high fives. So I'm capturing these intimate moments. Second shooter's here, getting the rest. And then we move into portrait session and cocktail hour. Okay, so that's how you maneuver within a wedding ceremony as you're photographing it. And the reason I really wanted to make this video was because I've seen it uh, photographed and filmed very, uh, I'd say horribly before. <laughs> um, during my cousin's wedding, I was staring at uh, one of the photographer's butts the entire time. Um, and I just didn't think it was very considerate. So uh, a few things to keep in mind, have two cameras on you, have a long lens, uh, work with your second shooter, mirror each other as you're shooting, and uh, take guests into consideration. For more tips and how-tos, visit my blog or the learn section of my website. Have a good day.